Okay, so now let's revisit our examples. Let's go back to the die example. We have our sample space. Now we need to assign a probability law. There's lots of possible probability laws that you can assign. I'm picking one here arbitrarily in which I say that every possible outcome has the same probability of 1 over 16. Okay, why do I make this model? Well, empirically, if you have well-manufactured dice, they tend to behave that way. We're, we'll be coming back to this kind of story later in this class, but I'm not saying that this is the only probability law that there can be. You might have weird dice in which certain outcomes are more likely than others. But to keep things simple, let's take every outcome to have the same probability of 1 over 16. Okay, so let's now, now that we have in our hands the sample space and the probability law, we can actually solve any problem there is. We can answer any question that could be posed to us. For example, What's the probability that the outcome, which is this pair, is either 1-1 one, one or 1-2? One, We're talking here about this particular event, 1-1 one, one or 1-2. One, so it's an event consisting of these two items. According to what we were just discussing, the probability of a finite collection of outcomes is the sum of their individual probabilities. Each one of them has probability 1 over 16, so the probability of this is 2 over 16. How about the probability of the event that x is equal to 1? x is the first roll, so that's the probability that the first roll uh, is equal to 1. Notice the syntax that's being used here. Uh, probabilities are assigned to subsets, to sets. So we think of this as meaning the set of all outcomes such that x is equal to 1. How do you answer this question? You go back to the picture and you try to visualize or identify this event of interest. X is equal to 1 corresponds to this event here. These are all the outcomes at which X is equal to 1. There's four outcomes. Each one has probability 1 over 16. So the answer is 4 over 16. Okay. How about the probability that x plus y is odd. Okay, that will take a little bit more work, but you go to the sample space and you identify all the outcomes at which the sum is an odd number. So that's a place where the, the sum is odd. These are other places. And I guess that exhausts all the possible outcomes at which we have an odd sum. Uh, we count them, how many are there. There's a total of eight of them. Each one has probability 1 over 16. Total probability is 8 over 16. And harder question, what's the probability that the minimum of the two rolls is equal to 2? This is something that you probably couldn't do in your head without the help of a diagram. But once you have a diagram, things are simple. You ask the question, okay, this is an event that the minimum of the two rolls is equal to 2. This can happen in several ways. What are the several ways that it can happen? Go to the diagram and try to identify them. So the minimum is equal to 2 if both of them are 2s. And or it could be that x is 2 and y is bigger, or y is 2 and x is bigger. OK. I guess we rediscover that uh, yellow and blue make green. So we see here that there's a total of five possible outcomes. The probability of this event is 5 over 16. Simple example, but the procedure that we followed in this example actually applies to any probability model you might ever encounter. You set up your sample space, you make a statement that describes the probability law over that sample space. Then somebody asks you questions about various events. You go to your pictures, identify those events, pin them down, and then start kind of counting and calculating the total probability for those outcomes that you are considering.